Johan out in Florida. Uh, he, him pronouns is a pantheist and not a theist. That is very interesting. Well, you were chatting with J Mike and SR. Tell us, Johan, why are you a pantheist and not an atheist? I'm more interested are we in just that. Talking about this oh, before the show, kind of. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Thank you so much for taking my call. I'm happy to be with you. Um, first of all, because I survived the hurricane with no damage to person or property. Oh, that's and, awesome. Uh, secondly, that's because good. I spoke, I spoke to J. Mike once before and uh, wanted to uh, call back and sort of complete that uh, my thoughts on that call. Yeah. So I am a pantheist rather than an atheist for mm -hmm. two reasons, one of which is metaphysical and the other of which is ethical. And I find, personally, I find the ethical reason more compelling. So if it's okay with you, I'd like to, I'd like to lay that one out. I'm, I'm, yeah. I um, might be more so interested in the ethical reason. So please lay that out. Yeah. I'm also yeah, going to you. incorporate, uh, so ethical uh, uh, oh, hold on real quick. Uh, is it, it's pronounced Johan, right? I just want to make sure I'm getting that right. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Okay. yes Johan. I, I vaguely you. do remember our um, conversation. Yeah, if you don't, if you don't mind, um, I'm not going to exclude um, SR into this conversation. So oh, yeah, I'm yeah. happy to go through no, the dialectic one, with you, but I'm not, I don't want to exclude if if you're okay with that, like because otherwise it's I should just move uh, on to another yeah. caller because I don't I don't like to like do the thing where my host has to sit out for a little bit. Yeah. Unless they just want to do that. So, so as long as you're cool with that, yeah, we can proceed. Yeah. Great. Uh -huh. I. I I've listened to SR and uh, have a lot of respect for him and his views, so that, nice. that would be wonderful. Awesome, I, uh, yeah. So the Thank ethical you. reason that, so the ethical reason for my pantheism is uh, essentially is grounded in um, sociolinguistics or, and psycholinguistics, and it has to do with the fact that words uh, uh, have power and they're used as tools and weapons in in the world, mm -hmm. and. Uh, mm -hmm. Where I'm coming from is the, the word God uh, has perhaps been used in a more destructive way than any other word in Western languages. It's been used to establish and support uh, violent and oppressive hierarchies that are paternalistic and do great damage to people and create a sort of, in a Hegelian uh, sense, a kind of a master-slave morality, uh, mm -hmm. which is oppressive and violent and does great harm in the world. And the problem that I have with atheism on ethical grounds is that the atheist, while denying the existence of this um, transcendent uh, interventionist personal God who establishes and supports all these hierarchies, and I support atheism for that, but the atheist, in my view, uh, sort of sees of the word God to the theist and says, we're just not going to play on that playground. You can have that word and do whatever you want to do with it because we don't believe in it. And pantheism comes in and rescues the word God from the monotheists and from those who uh, believe in the Abrahamic uh, hierarchical master-slave God. And mm -hmm. say, not that God doesn't exist, but that you, uh, monotheists, you, you have God all wrong. You're you have God establishing this hierarchy, which puts human beings at the top and puts man at the top of that. Uh, that so if, if I can cut in for a sec, Johan, because I'm wondering, uh, I guess one of the, the struggles I'm having right now, and I think this is oftentimes a struggle I have with, with pantheists or, or pantheism in general, is you're saying a word that I've heard a lot of people say, and a lot of people give defining characteristics too. And really at the end of the day, there's this fuzzy cloud of a concept that we're trying to figure out what the heck it is. And it kind of doesn't matter what specific noises we use, right? We but just the concept, we, this is literally, this is <laughs> we now literally what we were talking yeah. about before the show, J. Yeah. Mike. Yes. Yeah. And so I guess what I'm getting at is what are you saying when you're saying God here? Because right now I have no understanding. I get that you're not in the, you know, Westboro Baptist Church view of a God. I totally get that. Um, but I, I just genuinely don't know what you're saying when you say you believe in a God. It's almost as if you said to me, like, I believe in a blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I'm, and I'm, I'm just kinda, like, I, I don't know what that means. I'm kind of in the same spot because like if me and SR had a, um, 
I'll use kind of the example we were talking about and before, which is that like if we had some dispute about like I said, hey, I'll meet you at a bank at like five o'clock, right? I'll meet you at the bank. And SR goes to like a financial institution and I call him like, where are you? He's like, well, I'm at the bank. And I'm like, no, no, I'm at, you're not, I'm at the river and I don't see you, right? Now all we're talking about, all that happened is like, there's like this weird like thing going on where we use the same word, but we're there, we're hitching our wagons to different concepts. Like I meant a river bank, uh -huh. right? Or, and he meant a financial institution. But right now it's not clear that like, okay, I understand what the distinction between you don't believe the thing that you know, God, uh, theists believe about God, but I can't do the same kind of comparison like a river bank and a financial institution. It's like I have the financial institution, but not the other thing. So, uh -huh. Uh -huh. so I have to agree with SR there. So, yeah, help us out. Yeah, so uh, those are that's excellent and, and a fantastic question that sort of leads me away to the metaphysical reason for my statement. But I would just say that. Up front, I will admit the difficulty with pantheism is in describing what we mean by this word God because we have to say, I as a pantheist say ultimately that whenever I speak to you about the word God, I'm speaking metaphorically because I'm speaking about something that human beings lack the uh, intellectual capacity to understand. It means, for me, it means well, I'm talking so, about. Wait, if it's just ultimate, metaphorical, there's not going to be a substantive God, dispute. Uh, Right. Johan, there's, this is what we were just talking about before the show is that there's not going to be a, a substantive dispute between us. It's going to be a semantic dispute, right? right? The, the same way with like the financial yeah. institution, because um, if it turns out, this is why I think SR and, and I both want to identify this thing is that once we find out what that thing is, if we go, oh yeah, okay, like, yeah, I agree. You can, I might even hold the same kind of metaphorical way of expressing that scenario or something like that. But that isn't telling me like, any, there's not like a substantive dispute between us. It's just that you're using this grunt, you know, this phonetic, I always say phonetic sound. It seems redundant. I'll say it anyway. It's like <laughs> phonetic sound um, God to describe something that is a proposition or a concept that we share. So that's why like it gets a little hard. And I think this might've been what we talked about last time, but I, when I talk to pantheists, it's almost every single time I'm trying to understand if they're adding thing, any more, anything else, literally to the universe that mm. I don't share propositions. I don't share. Cause if it turns out we just make this giant Excel spreadsheet and you list out all, you know, put in the cell, all the stuff and I compare mine, it's all the same. And you just are using this term God. And I'm saying I'm an atheist. All we've identified is there's not a substantive dispute. There's a semantic dispute and I'm not interested in semantic disputes. I think they're a waste of time. Yeah. If really what you mean by God is just literally all of the individual atoms in existence in the entire universe, J. Mike and I agree that atoms exist. And if that's all you mean by God, then it's like, cool. I would just probably say, hey, maybe use a different term because this is kind of unhelpful. But, yeah. you know, whatever. OK, cool. Uh, but no, I, I don't want to take you off, Johan. But yeah, that's just kind of me. And I know me and SRC exactly the same way on this. So that'll help you kind of get our picture. Because if it turns out that you don't have any substantive di distinction between us, that's not yeah. an insult to you. That's just to say there's no substantive distinction between our views other oh. than the semantics we use. Yeah. Then, then we probably won't have anything interesting to say for the audience. Yeah, and we could go back to the ethical okay. thing, to be honest, because I think, I think if we discover that there isn't a substantive difference and it really is semantic, I, I would imagine based on what you said about the ethical side of it, which I have some problems with, but, but I would imagine you would say that there is more utility in using the word God than the other word, which is what I would probably try to try to get you to. So that, but anyway, go with that. Is there a semantic difference or a substantive difference here when, when you're using this term God? Uh, there may be a substantive difference, and if there is, uh, I, I can quickly lay out enough for you so that you can take yeah, it on. Yeah, give it to us. Uh, yeah, it's perfect. And what I would perfect. say is that what, what led me to the to the um, to, to into pantheism from atheism was uh, trying to grapple with the hard problem of consciousness, mm -hmm. and in trying to grapple with the hard problem of consciousness, I um, came up against the question of if the universe is only a material universe composed of atoms, uh, subatomic particles, etc., uh, the problem of uh, how to uh, account for the emergence of consciousness from unconscious matter 
given a material with a materialist or reductionist um, uh, scientific study. Well, I, I'm an identity uh, theorist, so I reject emergence anyway. That's not the only option. I, I'm, a, I guess you could call it physicalist, but I'm an identity theorist. So, like, there isn't emergence. The brain just is. Like, yeah, the mind just is the brain, in my view. Yeah, I get and rid it of sounds some extra ontology that way. It sounds like what you're ultimately saying at the end of the day, Johan, is that because we don't have a good solid answer to this particular problem, it has to be this other conclusion. And that's just fallacious, right? That's no, just... That is fallacious. Yeah, that is fallacious. And that's not the point. That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is that I provisionally accept a panpsychist explanation uh, that consciousness is uh, a fundamental property and not an accidental property or an emergence property, that consciousness is somehow fundamental in the universe. And I accept that, I accept that uh, panpsychism provisionally. It's a tentative um, belief which can be falsified by a successful materialist explanation for the emergence of consciousness. See, see right there, though, that's where, that's where I have the problem, Johan, is because all the way up until that last little bit that you tacked on there, I was tracking with you, man. I was following along because you were like, man, yep. you know, look, I just, you can't be 100% certain about anything, but I think there's a, you know, I think there's some, points on my side of the argument to you know lean towards this direction and i was like man johan you 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 on it man i'm with you and then you went uh you know until they come up with something that defeats my position and see and that's why i'm pushing back on this is because ultimately you really are just relying on that you really are relying on the fact that nobody has nobody has demonstrated to you that this this doesn't work but that doesn't mean that it does work i don't even understand the, what the philosophy of mind stuff has to do with any of right. this like it's not really clear to me like whether you're a physical like because like th this is a problem i have is that people make this big deal about the hard problem of consciousness and it like yeah like as someone's an identity theorist there's no hard problem in my view but um and i know people are like what there's no hard problem it's an identity theorist or reductive physicalist is going to reject that there's a hard problem um but this is annoying to me is that in all of these views, when I read the literature, I see like immense problems in all these views. Mm -hmm. Panpsychism, you have these little proto minds. What's in it in these little proto minds and how do they right. form bigger minds like ours? Like that seems weird, right? Like I like having a only mental God. What is it for like this I, a theistic idealism with this like mentality? How does you go from the mental to the physical? Mm -hmm. Why does it not work in both ways? What what, mm -hmm. what is what is like the supposed asymmetry between going from this physical to the mental as opposed to like this mental thing to this physical thing that God creates, right? If you're going to host an issue, you have to show the asymmetry between that. But regardless, they all host problems, right? All of these views have problems, dualism, substance dualism. They all have like uh, supposed problems. But a lot of it, what I think is going on there is, is utility of like how we use language. It doesn't fully capture what we're trying to express mm -hmm. on certain concepts. Um, but I don't know what turns on any of that, even if I was to grant like, right. yep, there's a hard problem of consciousness, all these problems. How does that get me to like some pan? To, I guess this is a better way to put it. I think all of those views in, philo in philosophy of mind are compatible with any view. You could be an atheist mm -hmm. or a theist mm -hmm. or a pantheist and hold any one of those views. Mm -hmm. Michael Humer is an atheist. He's a substance dualist. He thinks souls exist. Mm -hmm. He's a PhD philosophy professor. He believes that, right? He's yeah. a smart guy. Yeah. I don't think he's right about that. Right. But you can totally have that view and have your arguments for it, right? I think they're fleeting, but. So what, what's your response, Johan? What do, you, what do you think to all that? Yeah, my response is I agree with everything you say. And uh, I, I, I just would circle back to come full circle to the um, ethical argument okay. that I began with. Cool. Um, yeah, I was like, we can't back, agree, though. We have to call. disagree. <laughs> we have to disagree for there to be a substantive no, well, dispute, Johan. No, I'm just messing with you. I'm just messing. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm glad. Go go yeah. back to the ethical thing, because I, I have some stuff I, I want to uh, poke at just a little bit there. But yeah, go go back to that, Johan. On the ethical argument, I just want to circle back to my previous yeah. call, where I, I made the contention that we have a a uh, consequentialist imperative to believe that which supports well-being. And my pantheist view, um, in just oh, in practical terms, since I adopted my pantheist view as opposed to my previous atheist view, 
I find that I'm more supportive of my fellow beings, including animals. Sure. I find that I'm living okay. a more. Hang on, hang on. I can I can jump uh, in right there, happier. Johan, because I I see where I see where you're going with that, and I I can jump in because I, I I can grant that. Hey, man, look when I believe X, you know, Y or Z, right? Like I, I behave as a better person. It's like, yeah, fine. I, I can see the ramifications, right? But unfortunately, that's a poor methodology for believing something is true, right? Because we have a lot of Christians that change their lives. We have a lot of Muslims that change their lives, a lot of atheists that change their lives. A lot of people do that, right? There's a lot of different ways to get to that conclusion. But what I want to go back to, though, is about the moral imperative to believe that which supports well-being. I don't understand that. That doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. And I, I, I don't know where that comes from. I, I don't understand that concept of a moral imperative. What yeah, I, I was, understand, that's I, to jump I knew, I knew <laughs> you want, I knew you yeah, wanted to. It's like what, gibberish to me. What I understand, uh, for instance, Johan, is is like. If we accept, you know, consequentialism, if we accept this stance of well-being as the thing that we're going for, and if these things lead to higher well-being, like then it's like a, oh, okay, I, I can see how it it would make sense for us to to do the things, right? But but where I'm not at is just this generalized you we we should, should yeah. do this thing for well-being because i don't know that we're all on the same page there and also the moral imperative to believe something as true that what doesn't make that doesn't follow the imperative to maybe act as if we believe something is true i could see how it follows but i don't see how the you have to accept something is true because it has benefit like do those do those kind of pushbacks do they do they mean anything? Do they hit you? Or, or is it just all just nonsense I'm saying here, Johan? We're also assuming that you're talking categorical imperatives oh, and not right, hypothetical right, right, imperatives. Right, right, right. right. No, I, I'm talking consequentialist imperatives. So in other words, hypothetical. Well, hold on. I, the way that I, hold on, but the way I understand what you mean, but the way I understand this divide is categorical imperatives, which I think is total gibberish and makes no sense. And I can explain why I think that makes no sense. Or hypothetical imperatives, which is something that me and, a secular and probably a whole bunch of the audience is going to agree with there is this objective thing in the world like if i go up and punch elliot in the face like right now and i just go like bop like i just hit him right in the face that's there's an objective fact that that's going to decrease his well-being nobody is going to disagree with that right. but that's not like a realist project it's not a categorical imperative because literally every any person in any meta ethical view would agree that punching elliot in the face is going to decrease their their um their well-being that mm -hmm. says nothing about realism it's compatible with realism it's compatible with anti-realism it's compatible with non-cognitivism it's mm -hmm. compatible with emotivism it's compatible with all these different views so it doesn't say anything towards towards that and the further thing is that if if you if you want to express this view on a categorical notion i'm gonna have to like really try to understand this view because the way that people express uh, stance independent obligations or categorical imperatives saying that you have reason to do X independent of anybody's opinion is to me like saying this food is tasty independent of taste buds, like divorced from taste buds. Mm. This is tasty. It doesn't mean anything like what it, what's built into the concept of tastiness is this like referential notion to taste buds. What's built into this concept of like what you should do is some reference to something like, oh, I should do this if I hold this standard. I should do this if I think well-being is the case. Should statements, just like tasty statements, only makes – what makes sense is that they have that built into their – to their concept. If you don't have that, if there's nothing built into the concept of like a categorical imperative where it's referential towards something like that, it just sounds like, like not, it's, it's not even clear it's propositional to me. It's not even clear it could be true or false. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Johan? Yeah, I, I reject uh, categorical imperatives. I, Yay! I'm absolutely <laughs> about hypothetical. Okay, well, yeah, I wasted cool. a whole bunch of time, so oh, I apologize. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Oh, it's informative. It's, it's, it reminds me on a previous call, we reached this point 
And we ended up uh, having to say, we, we concluded the call, which may, we may well do again today, we concluded the call yeah. by saying that... I'm start, yeah, uh, I'm starting to remember it, that we had agreements. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm, and I'm, feeling, I'm yeah. feeling like we're getting, we're getting kind of close to a wrap point. Real, real quick, I want to get, you... get him to, to finish his statement, if you okay, can. Yeah, please, I feel like we please, talked over him a bunch of times, and that's my fault, really. Yeah, go ahead, Johan. No, I just, want, I just wanted to wrap it up by saying that um, if... We can uh, agree that well-being is a value that we agree upon, then we'll yeah. never be able to agree on any statements because a should statement is always going to be based on a, a, a core value. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah, definitely. And that I think that's why J. Mike yeah. and I come to such similar places whenever people are talking about, you know, objective morality and so forth. Um, Okay, so look, we're gonna here's here's what we do, Johan, because I like Johan. I know I enjoyed this I like, like crazy. <laughs> I think I think that call uh, you 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 had the last time about the moral imperative must be freaking awesome. So I am gonna go uh, find that after this show and watch it. And everybody out there, you should too, because you can find all the clips in the live shows. It's very easy. But here's what we're gonna do, Johan. Uh, give us a call back in the future um, and let's talk about this some more because I think there is some really interesting stuff here. You said a lot of things that that I'm I'm still thinking about. I still got I still got bouncing around in my brain. Um, and I feel email. like we can yeah, I feel like we can make some progress. So yeah, yeah email, send us an email. email. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. like if if you send an email to Tevin Tevin, what the fuck is Tevin? T V at atheist community.org, Tevin. That reminds me of that. Was that the cable guy when like uh, Matthew Broderick punches Jim Carrey in the face and he's like, St "Steven, St my lisp is gone." And he punches him again. He's like, "You stupid son of a bitch." Anyway, if you go to uh, TV at hyphen uh, or sorry, TV at atheist hyphen community dot org, uh, it's on the screen. There you go. Uh, send an email, and I would love to like correspond back with you. Maybe if you want, we can take it to Discord so we don't have to exchange like a month of emails which we could probably do in like one or two like mm -hmm. two hour conversations or one hour conversations so Jan, johan if that's interesting to you at all uh, i eventually do look at my emails i've gone back to i think most of them um and i'll make a point too but i would love to chat with you about it and just give you a lot of time to kind of lay out stuff i can write it out and see where there is maybe a substantive disagreement or if there's just not and we're just kind of semantically disagreeing here 